one of my subscribers was curious why do gay people parade in the streets and uh, flaunt the fact that they are gay. Well, I asked the, the question, why would Negroes in Chicago run in the streets with megaphones and uh, demand their right to free housing or health care? Why would war protesters, who could protest war in a generic sense? You might protest a certain war for a certain reason, but if you simply joined your friends in the streets again to protest any war carried out by the United States, I ask, why do these clowns run in the streets just as the gay pride people run in the streets, just as the feminist run in the streets? Why are the environmental people uh, militant? Don't they have a vote? Why do environmental people, for example, lay their bodies on train tracks in front of a train carrying chemicals to a chemical factory such as the one near me, uh, DuPont. I met a girl who proudly confessed that she did that. Uh, tried to stop a shipment of chemicals to DuPont. I happen to know DuPont down here on the Gulf Coast makes titanium dioxide a white powder which is inert and is used as a dye or a colorant or an additive to food, to paint. It's in my coffee creamer that I'm drinking right now. What is so evil about titanium dioxide? I believe that these young people, mainly their young people, are the crazy people who were instigated and brainwashed when they were younger uh, are the pawns of socialist Marxists who infiltrated this country under the direction of the Soviet Union in the past and now under China or the already present Communist Party USA or uh, Hugo Chavez or the uh, intelligent services of Cuba. These people are pawns of the communists. Subversion is the term, if, if you look in a, in a dictionary or criminal code for that matter, usually is, ex, is explained as a part of activity to destroy things like uh, religion, government system, political, econ economical system of the country. And usually it's linked to espionage and such romantic things as blowing up bridges, sidetracking trains, um, clock and dagger activity in Hollywood style. Uh, when what I'm going to talk about now has absolutely nothing to do with the cliché of espionage or KGB activity of collecting information. So the greatest mistake or mis mis misconception, I think, is that uh, whenever we are talking about KGB for some strange reason, uh, starting from Hollywood movie makers to professors of political science and quote-unquote experts on, on Soviet affairs or Kremlinologists that they call themselves, they think that the most desirable thing for Andropov and the whole KGB is to steal blueprints of some supersonic jet, bring it back to Soviet Union and sell it to the Soviet military industrial complex. It's only partly true. If, if, if we take <clears throat> the whole time, money and manpower that the Soviet Union and KGB in particular spends outside of USSR border, we will discover, of course there are no official statistics unlike with CIA or FBI, that the espionage 
as such occupies only 10 to 15 percent of money, time, and manpower. 15 percent of the activity of KGB. The rest, 85 percent, is always subversion. The rest, 85 percent, is always subversion.